so today I'm going to be doing a vintage makeover. I did an Instagram poll um, in my story on Instagram, which you can find my Instagram handle below, um, on what you guys wanted me to film, and the two options were a day in the life video or a vintage makeover video, and it was too close to call, um, so I'll probably do both, but um, this one was the one I was most excited about, so I wanted to film this first. So I'm kind of inspired by 40s, 50s. A little bit of 20s too, but I'm um, gonna try to keep it as realistic as possible. But do work with what I have, which I don't have a ton of options or vintage options, so I'm just gonna do the best I can. So I'm gonna start with my hair because that's gonna take the longest, and while it's setting, I'll do um, my makeup. But I've watched a lot of videos um, with the past week on vintage hair and like how to do specific kinds of curls, so I decided on a method that I want to use. Um, and I guess we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to use my Numi wand in, with the one inch barrel. Um, and then I'm also going to be using some products, which I'll get to in a minute. So I'll probably at some point start speeding up the process just because um, you do not want to watch me curl my hair for the next 30 minutes. So I my hair is clean. I washed it a day or two, two, two days ago. So it's not dirty yet, but um, I'm just going to brush through it, get all the snarls out of it. We're down yesterday, so it's got some... Ow! Ugh. This is not the proper way to walk. brush your hair, but I didn't think it was so snarly. Okay. When I put clear elastics in my hair, which I did yesterday, I feel like they get super... It can tangle in them. Okay. So... All of the snarls are out of the way, and I'm going to start by um, sectioning it off. So I'm going to start with taking a huge chunk of it and clipping it up so I have the bottom section to work with. So the way that I saw on YouTube that I decided would probably work best for my length of hair, um, what she did is she basically did... She curled down was her method, but when it was on the sides, it basically meant she was curling it towards her face, which will help get that like vintage wave in the front. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, but I'm also going to pin them up to set. So um, I need to get access to bobby pins here. So I would recommend either these little guys, the alligator clips, or a bobby pin should work fine. The only thing I'm worried about with a bobby pin is that it's going to dent my hair, so hopefully that's not the case. But um, the reason I feel like this is going to take forever is because I have a ton of hair. So, um, I also have my tablet, so I might be watching the show while I curl my hair because I know it's going to take forever. But, um, the product I'm going to be using is, um, this Brilliant Damage Control from Aveda. Um, it is a heat protectant and I want to make sure, because I'm curling my hair, the living daylights out of my hair, I want to make sure it's protected. So I'm just kind of spraying that through both ends and then I'll comb it through and then we are going to get to curling. So starting from the bottom, I'm not taking huge sections. Hopefully this reaches, but I'll turn around actually. I am going to curl down And then instead of dropping the curl, I'm just going to slide the barrel out and keep it there. But then I'm going to take the clip and clip it to my head like a pin curl. So that's what I'm going to be doing. That's the method I'm going to be using. And I am going to crack into it. And I am going to start fast forwarding now. Um, but hopefully this is enjoyable for you. Thank you. 
that is all of the curls. My hair is completely curled and everything. This pen keeps falling out. Um, so now I'm going to let this set for about an hour and it is 12.08 and it is lunchtime. So I'm going to take 30 minutes, go eat, um, and then I will come back and do my makeup part of the makeover and then we'll finish the hair after that. I just want to let these curls sit for at least an hour-ish. Um, so hopefully that's the case, but yeah, I will see you in a little while. Okay, so I'm back. I am going to be doing the makeup portion of the video now. Um, I, it's been two hours, it's two o'clock now, um, since I last filmed. I had some random things that popped up that I needed to do, but, um, I had to put a hat on over my hair because I was leaving the house and the top got a little smushed. My pin curls did, but so far they're holding up fine. So I'm going to keep leaving these in until I finish my makeup and then we're going to go from there. So we'll see how this goes. Usually when I do my makeup, I do it leaning against like a, um, I do it like against the mirror that's hanging on the wall and I stand while I'm doing it. So this will be interesting, but I do have this, this palette that I love, the Emily Edit palette has a giant mirror, so I'm going to use that. Um, so I had washed and moisturized my face a couple hours ago now, but I'm in preparation for this, which I didn't get to. So we're going to get started. So the first thing that I'm going to use is... Um, I'm kind of going for a very like rosy and natural look because I feel like that's what was pretty characterized in the 40s and 50s. Um, the emphasis is on the eyes and the lips with um, a pop of red lipstick, so that's what I'm going to go for. So I'm going to start off with my Bare Minerals um, Original Foundation. This just, I love this stuff. It looks super natural and just very, um, I get very like a very natural glow with it. So I'm just going to start applying this all over my face. So the way that I learned to do it from one of my favorite YouTubers is that you put the powder in the lid and then swirl it around in the brush, tap it off the extra, and then buff it into the skin. People say you can build this up. I don't, I can't ever get really past a medium coverage look with this. Some people get to, I don't know how, if their skin just looks so nice, but my skin is very red. Um, there's a lot of red spots and stuff on it, especially like in my cheeks. So I don't usually get like a super full coverage pale look so but this will be nice because it'll be a lot more natural and just what is used in vintage makeup and honestly this is probably super similar I mean not really but like to back in the day um, makeup that they would use because they from what I know and I'm not super knowledgeable about it although I am somewhat researched as they used powders so using a powder foundation seemed pretty appropriate. Okay, so that's probably going to be enough for now. I am going to add to this look a little bit with some other, um, with my concealer and powder. I always go around my nose because that's always what rubs off first, so. Okay, so that is all set. Next up, we are going to be using concealer. Okay, so I am using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. Um, this is my go-to lately, so basically what I'm doing right now is my everyday makeup. But I put this under my eyes, not in my hair, and then also on my eyelids because I want those to be pretty pale too. I get a lot of discoloring in my eyes. I'm also going to kind of put some in the T-zone area, which is like forehead, nose, and then I also have some blemishes. And my chin that I'm gonna kind of try to blend into that but I usually like to apply it pretty liberally to my eyes because they're very dark so I just use my fingers to blend this in making sure I blend it in while still like leaving product I'm not wiping the product off I'm just kind of tapping it in more especially under my eyes Tap it in. Um, I feel like that gives me the most coverage without dealing with other stuff. So now that I have like this to like blend it out the rest of the way, I'm going to go back with my powder brush, the same one I used to apply the Bare Minerals, and I'm just going to kind of blend with that, but that's going to help um, do that. I'm also going to set it with powder in a little bit, but now that that is done, I'm going to go in with my NYX HD Finishing Powder in the shade Banana, I believe. Yes. Um, and I'm just going to right under my eyes. Um, but I just use this concealer brush and I get it in the powder. 
I try to keep my eyes wide open while I'm doing this because I have a huge tendency, my skin really creases under my eyes, so by trying to keep it as open as possible, I can try to eliminate those. Okay, I'm also going to do this to set the top of my eyelid. A lot of this is my go-to makeup on a daily basis anyway. I'm just trying to like, like I said, the difference is going to be where I do like my eyes and my lips, but this is my normal complexion treatment. So, now that that is all set, I just want to make sure there's enough powder there, which it is. It's not tacky at all. I am then going to go into my Rimmel Stay Matte Finishing Powder, and this is just in the shade Transparent. There's no color to it at all, but this really helps set um, any places where it might still be damp, which is in my T-zone, which is also where I get oily the fastest. So, I like to put this on because it just really helps with keeping that. And I'm just using the same brush. I I'm too cheap and don't have a bazillion brushes, so I just kind of use what I have. Here's that. Next, we're going to warm up the complexion a little bit. I'm trying to think out if I want to use bronzer because I don't know that they really used that a lot in um, the 50s or 40s, but I'm going to go in with a little bit just to make sure my complexion's a little bit warmer because I can look a little pale, which, again, is a good thing because that's exactly what they did in the 40s and 50s. So I'm just kind of kind of going under my cheekbones a little bit and around my forehead so I have a little bit more of a natural glow. Um, I'm not putting on anywhere near as much as I would normally. Um, next up is blush and this is where it gets a little fun. This is the only blush that I have um, and it's kind of peachy, not as pink as probably most vintage blushes are but I'm going to try to build it up a little bit on the apples of my cheeks and go with a little bit more of a warmer. I put a lot more than I normally do. I usually literally just dust blush and I kind of drag it upwards. I'm not doing that this time. I'm more focusing it on the apples of my cheeks um, because that's a very specific vintage trick. Okay, and I'll put a little on my nose. But that's what we have going so far. Um, I'm gonna hold off on the highlighter for now. Next up is eyes. So this is where I'm getting a little nervous because I'm gonna do winged a uh, winged eye look. And I don't know that, the last time I did that on myself, I, it was a long time ago, and I don't really remember it. Um, I don't remember it turning out very well. So, um, but first I'm going to do some shadows. So I'm going to go into my Emily Edit palette, and I'm going to go into the shade Prayer, which is basically just like a nude, peachy nude color. Um, and I'm just going to kind of put this all over my eyelid just to deepen up the look a little bit. So it looks a little more natural and not super pale. <laughs> Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for eyeshadow. Now, we're going to go into the eyeliner, which I actually just stopped at the store and picked up for this purpose, but I got, um, it's called the Voluminous Superstar Liquid Eyeliner, and it's supposed to be <clears throat> super precise and an easy application. It doesn't smudge. Um, and it's okay to be close by your eyes, so um, I can't see because I have my glasses on, so hold on a second. I'm going to go get a trick. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to use a trick which is to use tape in the corner of my eye, so that's going to help to get the wing look without screwing it up, hopefully. So I'm going to like put it on my shirt just to make sure it's not like overly sticky because I don't need it taking off a layer of skin with it. And it's gift taped, it probably wouldn't, but this will just give me some peace of mind. So I'm putting it on my shirt first and then taking it off. So it's not super sticky, but I am now going to put this, I don't, hopefully you can see me as I'm going to have to get pretty close to the mirror, but I'm going to call that good, but I need another piece. Oh, it feels so weird on my eye. <laughs> Because seriously, this is making me the most nervous. Like, I can handle the lipstick and all that, but it's the eyeshadow that, or eyeliner that's freaking me out because it's so easy to screw up. So, it looks pretty much the same. Oh, my eyes are watery. So this will be interesting because this eye has a scar right where the wing look would go. So I'm trying not to... Okay. Okay. Seriously, I can't. My eyes are watering. I'm also going to test this out on my wrist first because I do not want to mess it up by putting it on my eye. I hope this isn't waterproof. Well, I hope it's waterproof in the sense that it won't come off when I cry, but that it's 
Whoa. Never was there a scarier makeup tool. Oh. It seems pretty precise, I'm not gonna lie. I like the final product. Okay. I am gonna dive in. I'm just gonna start focusing it out this way before. Okay, before I start, kudos to me for even doing this because I can't see without my glasses, so I'm trying to apply makeup to an eye that I with my eye that I can't see out of. That's really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna focus this down because I'm gonna be down here trying to see in the mirror. This is not staying. the wing a little more a little bigger I'm gonna take this off and maybe try to freehand the rest of it so I don't know if you can see it um I think you can probably see it um, it's definitely there. Ah, look at the hair out of it. Um, I just want to, like, make it a little more dramatic. I feel like it's super boring. Get out of my hair! Well, I don't know if that's how wings are supposed to look, or if I'm just... have a weird eye shape for it, but... Um, I'm gonna call that one good and then do this eye now. Um... This one's gonna be hard. Oh crud, I can't. Okay, so a little story time. This eye is my worst eye. Like, I have astigmatism, so I can't see out of this eye anywhere near as well as I can out of this eye. So, by closing this eye and trying to apply eyeliner, it's super fuzzy. Ugh. How do people do this every day? Tell me. I really wanna know. I almost wanna know if they put their makeup on and then left it for several days because logically that makes a lot of sense. Let's see how far out does the wing go on each side. So, like it started out super black and now it's just like, oh, oh, there we go. It's like not. super dramatic because I don't know what I'm doing but okay all things considered I'm not mad this could be way worse than it is I'm just trying to finagle I don't know how to like get the middle of this eye <coughs> I'm 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 gonna call that it for now I'm gonna see if maybe I should do some under my eye you know what I'm gonna use okay okay I'm calling the wing good for now that was intense. I need water. I'm calling the wing good for now. Like I said, I don't know if I'll put it in, but my mom put it out with the scar on this eye. Like the wing liner goes like right through it. And it makes it pretty obvious. But um, it's a battle scar, so I'm not mad about it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I want to do because I've never done this before either. Where is my box? Okay, I'm going to go in with a very like... Um, this is like a crayon liner, and I'm just going to do my lower lash line. Just super faint, but I feel like it really helps open up my eyes a little bit more. Um, it just emphasizes my lower lashes. So, now that that's on, I'm kind of wondering if I should do more of a smoky eye, because I feel like that's pretty typical of vintage stuff. It's like this very smoky look. So, I'm trying to see if I have a smaller brush. I might go in... But I don't want to mess up the liner though. Oh, too many options. I'm gonna go in with the brown a little bit. Like super lightly. Okay, so I'm gonna put my glasses back on so that I can see what I'm doing now. Um and maybe actually examine this. Pretty. I don't think it's half bad. I just 
it doesn't look super vintage to me, but I also just might not have the face shape for it. I feel like a lot of like the vintage beauties were very round faced and they accentuated that. Um, I'm not super round. Um, I think the hair will make it for sure. Um, so I have this specific color that I actually saved. It's, it's one of the Aveda lipsticks and it's like this orange red that is like so vintage. It's not even funny. But I'm really nervous about putting it on going messy it up. So I am going to get, this is actually an angled brush, but I don't know if it's technically a eyeliner or a lip brush. So I'm going to use this brush to apply the lipstick. Also, one of the things very specific about the, the era is they had very, like, pronounced... Is it Cupid's bow? Yeah. I think that's what it's called. So I'm going to be very... Which I have, so I'm going to, like, accentuate that. As I briefly mentioned before with the Cupid's bow thing, uh, Hollywood very much and fashion very much accentuated the lips of this time period. So it was pretty uncommon to not see a woman wearing red lipstick, I'm just saying. Okay, I just need to get the lipstick off my teeth. Oh, I a wax spot. I started to start from the bottom and work my way up. Okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna open my mirror and comb out this side and see what happens. watching this video I hope you really enjoyed it I had a lot of fun um, making this vintage look I love old-fashioned things and I have always loved vintage fashion so I hope you enjoyed this delve into me trying to get and achieve this look I'm actually really proud of how it turned out um, I hope you enjoy the video be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this I'm hoping to delve into more like this in the future so keep that in mind um, comment below with what era I should do next again thanks so much for watching God bless bye